people here in our session too. Uh, so we are going to be picking a winner for this uh, the Silly Hat contest. And remember, it's a $50 gift card to Social Studies School Service. So cool stuff. Um, we will be picking the winner at the end. So without further ado, let's, let's get into it. All right. Um, today, we're going to be talking about how you can make sure that you're anchoring um, some, some thinking and some concepts to something concrete that students can really latch onto. And also, one thing that we really find is really beneficial when students are participating in some type of mapping activity where they're mapping a historical event or in geography if they're mapping something conceptually. Once they've grounded that concept or that time period in history in something concrete like a place on a map, they're able to make connections not only between other events during that time period, but also connecting what they learned at that time and that place to other events in other parts of history. It helps them really build better neural pathways to, to really retain the information and really you know, grasp it and understand the concepts. So this is not gonna be a sit and get type of situation today. Um, you guys will be asked to participate. So at one point, we're gonna give you guys a link that you're gonna go in as one of our students and check things out. All right, so what are we talking about here today? We're talking about the Nystrom hands-on programs offered by Social Studies School Service. And you can see the three uh, middle school programs that we offer. We offer the Our World, uh, Mapping Our World program, which which is, excuse me, foundations in geography. Then we have a mapping world history and a mapping US history. And those two are pretty much self-explanatory. Um, what you're gonna find is that these programs not only come with the print options where they come with the full dot desk maps, but we have a brand new wonderful digital component that is sold along with each one of these hands-on programs. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit further, but we're really going to get in and explore. So integrating our mapping, uh, our, our, our digital mapping programs. So what we're looking at here is when you purchase one of those hands-on programs, you'll get access to this digital portion for five years. This can also be purchased on its own. And I think Elise is going to talk a little bit about some of the purchase options uh, towards the end. But let's get into what it actually looks like. Now, I don't want you guys to use this link yet, but I do want you to copy this link. And Elisa is dropping it into the chat box right now. So you can grab the link from the chat box, but just put it in the browser, but don't go ahead and do anything just yet with it. I will tell you when to hit um, enter for that. So I'm gonna pull up my screen here and take us into what Nystrom World looks like. So this is the digital version of our mapping programs. And that link that I gave you, you're going to be one of my students. But before you become one of my students, I just wanna go over a couple of the different components here. And then I'm gonna show you how to register yourself as one of my students. Um, so the different components here, we have three parts to Nystrom World. They can be purchased all together or they can be purchased individually. And there are some things like the Explorer, which we're going to be focusing on mostly today. It goes along with the mapping programs, whereas the Researcher is something that goes more along with the Atlases. And then over here, the Geography, all of your wonderful Nystrom maps in one location in a digital environment. These are all you have the ability to manipulate these, to overlay different content and different information. So if I pull up the secondary maps here, you might have things like land use maps, uh, population density, but we also have some awesome ones like US history and world history maps, as well as some state specific historical maps as well. So you can see there's quite a variety in here. You get several hundred maps when you buy the full uh, geographer uh, secondary package that comes with everything that's in there. And there's some cool things you can do like th with this, like turning on this where you uh, connect directly to the CIA fact book, where the students can do research within the map and learn about these different countries and learn all kinds of information. You can search for specific locations. You can do, uh, set things up in split screen. So you can to compare two different regions or maybe the same region with different maps laid over top. Like maybe you're looking at a um, land use map and maybe a population density map. And that would be a great way for kids to understand that, that ridge that exists right here where this, the huge population of India suddenly drops off when you hit this line right here being the Himalayas, but it helps students to make some of those connections and those choices. 
Um, so there's that ability. You also have the ability to, to create and save. So anything that you or your students create in Nystrom World, they can save into your gallery here. Um, of course, you can turn on this great function here, which allows you to select certain regions or places. Um, there's a home screen that just takes you back to the home. Um, you can zoom in and zoom out. And then there are these icons down here at the bottom, and you're going to get to use these in action when we get into our lesson a little bit later. Um, so there's some cool things in here, like different symbols that you can put on the maps and different categories of symbols. There are push pins where you can drop in images, pictures, and text, as well as videos. Um, there's different ways to measure distances, to add all kinds of markings to the maps, and that's all available through that geographer component. So I'm just talking about these real quickly. Um, the next one, and I gave you an example of this. When you log in as a student, you're going to get um, to choose from, you're going to get to choose from world history, um, U.S. history, or geography. And I gave you a few different um, samples of these, but these here are the atlases. And so when you click on an atlas, it's going to give you your traditional e-atlas, which is a, a standard flipbook um, that the kids can flip back and forth on the different pages. They can zoom in and the images as they zoom in become crystal clear. Um, and then you also have the downloadable activities. So if you're familiar with the Nystrom atlases, traditionally the binder that goes along with it, um, it's just a downloadable, fillable PDFs that the students can uh, fill out and submit back to you. But then we also have this great new layer with these interactive activities. Um, I gave you some examples of this in the links that I assigned to you as my students. So you'll get to see that here in just a minute. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with this, lots of different ways to assess student learning. They are scaffolded, so they're built on uh, increasing depth of knowledge. So starting off with like low-level DOK questions and moving up and progressing through that, um, that hierarchy of knowledge. So um, right here you can see just some different types of assessment pieces and the students are asked to do things at different levels, different levels of thinking. Uh, this piece concludes with a short written response. So a lot of really neat things you can do in there, but this session is mostly gonna focus on the mapping. So um, before you guys actually use that link, I've given you that link. I'm gonna actually drop that link up here now. So I'm gonna paste that in. So if, if you guys would, after I show you this real quickly, I want you guys to take that link that I gave you or that Elisa gave you in the chat box or if you grabbed it from the PowerPoint slide, and you're going to copy and paste that into your URL bar here at the top. And so you'll drop that in and look, it's a student registration page. Now, what I would like to ask you is that when you register, and for those of you that are maybe watching this video later, it's like an on-demand type of session, um, I recommend that you still go ahead and register as a student. You'll have access to that, that link and it's very specific right there. It is case sensitive, so if you type it in, make sure you type it in correctly. But um, you'll, you'll get to go in, put your first name, last name. I would like you to use your school email address because that way we can confirm that a student hasn't gotten access to this and is getting all the answers out of it. We don't want that to happen. So if you would put in your official school email address, and the nice thing is we'll give you about a week to play around as a student, maybe a few days, and then we'll send you an email and tell you, hey, we're gonna upgrade you to the teacher license so that you can explore the content a little bit more. So make sure um, you guys register using your school email address so that we can do that. But, so what you guys are gonna do now is you're gonna put in your first name, last name, school email address, then you're going to put in a password, just a simple password. And then the most important part is this right here at the bottom. And here at the bottom, you get to choose which class you're going to be in. So I decided that I would make it um, a little bit more specific and, and kind of pared down for this session so that you can focus on just the content that you wanna see. So you can drop yourself into the geography license, the US history license, or the world history license. Now later, when you get the teacher account, will actually upgrade you and you'll get access to all of those. So you'll get to check all of those out and explore it all for 30 days. You'll click on agree to terms and register. And that's all you have to do. Really, really simple. So go ahead and do that now. And while you guys are doing that, I'm going to shift over into my one of my students here so that you guys can see what it looks like from the student view. So as you guys are registering your accounts, um, you're going to get, you're going to go in as a student, it's going to look like this when you are in 
the screen. You'll have a maps and tools button, you'll have atlases and activities, and you'll have assignments and grades. And if you scroll down, you can actually see the assignments that were recently assigned to you. Um, I assigned these out to you guys this morning so that you can go in and explore. Um, so I'm gonna give everybody a couple of seconds to get registered. And while you guys are still registering, I'm now going to click on the assignments and grades. And I'll mention this again a little bit later. So um, hopefully everybody is in and I'm just gonna kind of look peek at the, the window there to see everybody give me a thumbs up if you guys are registered. Man, we got some great silly hats today. We really do. Love it. All right, so thumbs up. I'm seeing lots of thumbs up. It looks like everybody's in, so perfect. All right, guys. Now, um, once you are in as your student, as one of my students, you're going to have this assignments and grades button. I would like you to click on the assignments and grades, and you'll notice I've assigned for you guys uh, five different activities. The first three activities are taken from the mapping programs, and the second two are taken from the researcher program. So over here, um, you'll see I've assigned a close reading exercise to everyone. No matter which class you chose, you're going to have a close reading exercise. Then you will have an actual mapping exercise where you're gonna to have to build a historical or conceptual map. And then the last one that I assigned for you out of the Explorer is a quick write. So you'll have a short little writing prompt that you need to respond to. So in just a few minutes, I'm gonna turn you guys loose to go and try these lessons out. And then we're gonna come back and uh, just talk a little bit more about, you know, why this is so powerful to use with your students. And um, I think what we're gonna do for the um, session, since it's being recorded, we'll probably just cut the recording. And so it'll just kind of lapse and come right back into us talking about that. But before we go in there, so it looks like we've got five different activities that you guys can explore. Um, I am gonna go back now and just give you guys a quick little overview as a teacher. So if you would come back to my screen for a moment. So the activity you're going to be doing today is one from one of these. So either the mapping our world, mapping US history or mapping world history. I'm just going to select this one so I can walk through it. You'll notice that the way that the program is structured, it starts with a close reading exercise, followed by uh, several, four or five, maybe six or seven different mapping activities. Then there's going to be a quick write exercise where there, for each one of these activities, you're going to have a writing prompt. So you can assign these quick writes out individually, or you can assign all the quick writes out if you're going to assign all of these activities that the kids can go back to and fill in later. Um, then there's going to also a unit quiz, which is over all of the lessons in here. And then finally, it's going to culminate with a mapping presentation research project. So if you're thinking like in the C3 inquiry arc, um, these ones up here would really be in that kind of gathering evidence and looking at different information. And then uh, down here at the bottom, that would be the mapping research presentation project would be the communicating results and taking action dimension of the, the C3. So it does really fit in really nicely there as well. Um, but also it does work for a traditional classroom that doesn't use C3 because you have things like the writing prompts and the quiz that evaluates and assesses the information in a more traditional format. Um, you'll see all of the units are structured the exact same way, different content, but same structure. So let's take a look at one of these lessons. And I think I assigned this one, the Great Wall of China to the world history people. So you may see this again, but I figure I'm just gonna quickly show you what it looks like. So from the teacher side of things, you're going to see what the final product should look like. And so uh, since you guys are probably about to do this assignment, I better hide those answers. But I did wanna show you that um, your students have, would not have access to this, but that's what the teacher view would look like. All right, so I, I just hid the answers from my teacher view. And when I turn you loose to get started on this, you're obviously gonna do the, the close reading exercise first, and that's pretty straightforward. It has a short two or three paragraph reading passage, and then a couple of questions that follow up for really analyzing that text. But when you get to the mapping activity, this is what it's going to look like. So you're gonna have slides with information. And I really like this one because it has some primary sources actually embedded into the assignment. You'll see these little excerpts that are taken from uh, different historical texts or 
or journals or diaries, things like that, that you'll find in here. And so as you click through these, you'll follow the instructions, you'll use the tools that are down here in the little toolbox. Sometimes within the slides, there are additional maps embedded in here. So this one has, and I always mispronounce this name, I think it's called the Qin Dynasty. Um, I apologize if I got that wrong, somebody can correct me later. Um, and then there's also another one here. I know there's another one. So it's on the, I believe, a map on the Han Dynasty. That one's a little bit easier to pronounce. And as I go through, there it is. So then you'll see there are two different maps. So we're looking at the Han Dynasty. And then the other map that pulled up was the Qin Dynasty. And so you'll have both of those maps to refer to as you're marking up this map and adding content to it. And I love the way that these lessons progress. Um, and usually kind of by the end of it, you're kind of pulling all that information together and trying to make sense of it at the end. This one here even has a photograph of what the Great Wall looks like. And so just great ways to make the students, make these concepts of these historical moments in time really make sense for the students. This one even has the Ming, China and trade map. Uh, so it has a lot of really good content that's, that's very attainable and easy for students to, to access and make sense of. And so you'll see here we've got all these different symbols. And as the students work through it, there are additional primary source documents embedded in it. And it does conclude with this right here. What I also love about it is you have the little individual symbols that you add to your map are only the symbols that are needed for this presentation. All right, so I know I've talked for a little while and I said that this was gonna be a hands-on session. So um, what I'm gonna do is turn you guys loose now and I'm gonna give you guys about five minutes or so to work through and just kind of explore some of those different activities. So go ahead and um, as your student, you're going to click on the assignments and grades and I want you to explore these different activities. Maybe take a stab at the close reading uh, try the mapping exercise, look at the quick writes, and, and do turn it in. So um, when you're on the assignment, when you click the little launch button, this one tells me that this is using evidence. Those are notes I put in as a teacher. You notice it has a turn in assignment button. So I would love for you guys to do that. If we have time in this presentation, I do want to show you the grade book, but I imagine we may run out of time. So I want to turn you loose before I go too long winded. And I want you to explore and then we're going to come back in about five minutes. All right, so I'm setting the timer and we'll see you in five. All right, guys, welcome back. Hopefully you guys had a really good time exploring. Um, hopefully you got to try out some of the different lessons in here. Um, you know, I really like these, these ones that I put under US history here, one on Spain's empire, uh, the quick rights, and then a couple of examples from the Atlas uh, questions. So hopefully you got to explore some of those. I'm not sure we're gonna have time to go over the grade book, but I do wanna show you um, where the grade book lives for the teacher. So real quick, I'm gonna jump back over here and you can see that there are the assignments and grades right here in this button. So this allows you to grade, to launch. You, you can filter by which students have turned it in, which students haven't turned it in, and which students have been graded already. So hopefully you enjoyed your time um, exploring the, this here. I'm gonna go back to our presentation. And again, for those of you that maybe um, watch this recording later, you do have this uh, link right here that you can grab and um, go and explore some of those activities. All right, so um, we also have another program called Active Classroom. And so Nystrom World and Active Classroom are actually a merge technology for Active Classroom where you have a combination of both Active Classroom and Nystrom World. So all of the really cool stuff in Nystrom World, but also a ton of curriculum content, uh, readings and videos and uh, decision-making activities, simulations, anything you could possibly think of. And um, I, think, I think at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Elisa to talk with you guys a little bit about the physical side of our programs rather than the digital. So Elisa, do you wanna take it away? 
Sure. Thanks so much, you guys, for really participating and going through that lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, your kids certainly will. Your students will enjoy it. One of the reasons why this program is a really great fit for different classrooms is it is flexible in its delivery. So Jason took you through how to do these kinds of lessons digitally and this program is a hands-on program. And if you teach middle school, if you teach any age student, even when we're doing things on our own, the experience of doing things with our hands and being involved in a learning, whether it's making something, a recipe, or whether it's doing a geography lesson, it can't be underestimated how important it is to really do things physically. The hands-on learning is very effective. It's been proven to improve retention. And when we're dealing with middle school students, the, the ability to retain information for a long period of time, even just for a test, but for several years is so important because it really lays the foundation for what your high school colleague teachers can build off of in a few years that those students have done all that work and they can really capitalize on it a few years later and make sense of it out in the world. Something about the hands-on approach you'll see, it's gonna allow for some great collaboration in all of those different realms, world history, US history, um, physical and human geography, um, because you probably learned this in some of your PDs, but the hands-on learning is gonna engage both sides of the brain. So we often talk about a more left side brain, more right side. If you're left and you're listening and you're analyzing, those processes occur in the left hemisphere. On the right side, the visual and spatial processes. And when you do a hands-on activity like this, where you have that dual-sided laminated map, you're looking at the atlas, you're looking at primary sources, you're looking at questions and trying to plot them with PALS, you are using both sides. And that kind of leads to some magic that allows for a stronger uh, overall connection and you can store that information for longer. So what I wanna show you through these is the program. I'm going to take the screen and I'm going to show you what this program looks like. Here you have the geography program. If this was something that you did in your lesson, then this is what yours is gonna look like. You're gonna have sets of maps the dual sided uh, on, with both sides, you'll have your lesson, your lessons, your atlases for your students. You also have a digital supplement. You can get it all print, you can get it all digital, you can get a blended uh, format, which is actually super helpful right now because many of us are doing both. If you teach world history, some of these atlases may be very familiar for you, but it's also part of a larger program like this. So while you might have the lessons, you could be getting them with this mapping teacher guide that has these hands-on components for a more, a deeper experience with the, with the content, more sensory and motor related areas of the brain being engaged. It also leads to more increased brain activity. This is all great. Middle school students, there's a lot going on, other courses, things going on physiologically outside of school, it's just great to get them involved in something they're going to enjoy, but also remember. And last for you U.S. history teachers, I didn't forget about you. This is what that looks like. The classroom set of atlases, the laminated maps, and the teacher guide. Super easy to use, step-by-step -step materials that you need. Wonderful. So at this time, could you show those again? Because they're not showing on your screen. I think they're not coming up the, the US history and the world history. Oh dear. Our world. Okay, let's do this again. We still got a couple of minutes, so we're okay. Share, new share. See, I needed to click new share each time. I'm learning, huh. I'm learning, always learning. All Always right, do I have a thumbs up with the US? Got it. Look at that, instant feedback, so helpful. As I've led you down the wrong path, now we're back, we're back together. Little detour. Now for your, let's do a new share. Here's the world history. Let's see where that. 
that lens. All right, hold on. If you teach world history, I will be happy to send it to you because I'm sitting here trying to find it and I don't want to take too much time and I'll be happy to send this to you You're showing via attachment. It. You're showing it. Oh, you can see world? Yep, scroll up. Good. Excellent. No, well, there it is. Okay. There you go. So big bonus for you, depending on what you do in your classroom, it may make more sense to do something that's entirely one-to-one. -one. If you have those devices, you want to take advantage. If you want something more blended to be able to utilize them when it's best fit to your discretion, you can do print. You can also do digital. Maybe you want to do all digital, but have some print atlases for the kids to take home. Lots of flexibility here, but just a great way. There's many states whose standards have been written specifically to incorporate both of that interdisciplinary approach to social studies where you're pulling in different disciplines. That takes a lot of effort to create those lessons and we've tried to do that for you here and take that off your plate. And it's just a, a really great program I hope you're able to explore. Jason? Okay, let me share my screen now, if you could unshare yours. There we go. All right. So um, we offer a ton of webinars as well for professional learning. Um, you can access those um, through socialstudies.com slash webinars. You can see any of the ones we've recorded previously or sign up for any upcoming ones. Tons of wonderful topics, not just about products, but a lot about different strategies as well about like current events and current hot topics in social studies. So great thing to check out. Here are some samples uh, using narrative simulation based learning to foster civil discourse. Uh, using a methodolo uh, methodological approach to investigate personal primary sources. Just a lot of really, really cool stuff in here. We have blogs you can sign up for. Um, you get access to different lessons and things like that that we send out on a monthly basis. So please sign up and, and uh, go to socialstudies.com to register for any of those. And uh, there is our contact information. Uh, Elisa Stevenson right there, Elisa at socialstudies.com, and Jason at socialstudies.com. Uh, that's what I look like without a silly hat on. So thank you guys so much for joining. Oh, but wait, before we go, um, I used the randomizer. We put everybody's name in there and it looks like Carl Francis from Cesar Chavez Middle School. Congratulations. Uh, you participated in the $50 gift card. We will be sending it to you. So um, I need you, your email address. So stick around here when everybody leaves so that I can get your email address so that we can send that to you. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Great job, yay. <laughs> Good job. <laughs>